Hi, everybody. What, what is going on, Kiana? How are you doing? Hi, Hi. Kiana. Hi. We're going to talk about the King of Wands today the and the Wands. Queen of Pentacles, which is basically who is husband and wife material. I have no idea what she's talking about. But today's episode is brought to you by water. Make sure you drink some nice, wholesome, clean water. Unleaded water from <laughs> a nice... He's water drinking water. it from the uh, water fountain counter. <laughs> so... Uh, um, yeah, so to, like she said, today on Yada Debates, we will actually be talking about the discussion of what is marriage material? And I wanted to say this, and this was one of the things that I was thinking about, because again, we read the statistics that um, specifically, I guess, like so more so in our generation, divorce rates are high and marriage rates are low. So it's like we... Hey, uh, yeah. Stop. <laughs> don't, do it. don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, so like we kind of want to like bring this to attention it's like what is marriage material and like oh hey it's not no no i was i was sick that last episode and you know it was uh, on some of some extremely strong call medicine so yeah last episode yada was here he was present in the house he was just more like av in the background type i was passed out on the table listening with my ear but well listening because like it was like a delay but yeah so he was here but, you know, I can't do the show without Yada. It's not Yada the base without Yada. I told him this. I, I can't do this. I told her stop. We are yin thing. and yang, and that's how it's going to be. So next time y'all see us, when we have a guest, it'll be Yada, Shelly, and other. So that's how it's going to go, okay? <laughs> no more just me by myself, none of that. Because obviously I can't run the show without she Yada. She was fine. I just told her stop looking at Facebook so much. She looks she's like showing too much attention. Um, anyway. Um, so, you know, the Instagram feed is coming up a little bit. YouTube, hello, everybody. So, um, yeah, so yeah. so this thing about uh, marriage material. And the thing, the reason why it is so heavy is because that is a legal agreement. This is like, okay, I am- Marriage is a business. I am getting my, the state involved in my romantic affairs. And- And you are now part of my tax ID. Um you are now i have to claim you with all of my assets your credit score affects my credit score so marriage is something more than just love and that's why a lot of people do get divorced so fast because we get married because oh we're like oh my god i love this person i want to marry them and then you realize that they have like a 220 credit score and now you over here trying to buy a house and they like you can get this trailer in the back for like 15 dollars. well let, let me ask you that to, to kind of like jump into that do you think something like that can play like a serious role like when it comes down to like you know building the foundation of the marriage and the relationship like things like that like credit score and finances because like in the beginning you know, yes like, you wouldn't want to be with a financially responsible partner that'll bring you down like especially if you're a financially responsible person mm -hmm. um you wouldn't want to be with someone who irresponsibly spends who may recklessly just spend not doesn't want to save so say you save your money <laughs> and then now they spent all their money. They're like, babe, God, it's far like fifty dollars, and then that fifty turns into one hundred, and then you're basically they're, they're just liquidating you of all your assets, and now y'all both broke. So you have to really be mindful of like going into a marriage. Like marriage is a contract; it's like a business. Mm. You know, that's so, how I look at it. So, so, but like with, with that, but I'm a Capricorn, so everything to me is a business. So, but but again, with that, it's just like you know, um, again, it's it's just like you know, you go into like this idea of marriage, like you know, you marry who who you truly love, who you have like those romantic and like that that mental and emotional connection, and it's just like I'm gonna stop where, getting where, where are we seeing like that, like because you know, it, I'm it, it stop is a, it's a, it is a legal thing, but it's just like people marry the person that they love at that time, but we don't realize is that when you get married to someone, you have to marry them and realize that nobody stays the same so a lot of times why a lot of people get divorced is because when you meet someone that's the person who you think they're going to be forever and people evolve people change so you have to learn to love people as they are and as they go through their different phases in life and a lot of people can't do that they love the idea or the image that they create of a person in their mind versus who the person really is. So then they end up disappointed. And that's why a lot of people do get divorced because they're like, well, I want you to be this way, or I want you to do this, or why can't you be the old you or this and that? And they don't respect people's growth 
too as well in marriage. Mm. So it's like a lot of different factors go into husband and wife material more so than even just finance and love and things like that. Because I could love you right now, Yana, as a person like who you are right now, but five years from now, you might be a completely different evolved person. And then I'll be like, damn, I don't like this Yada. This hint. Yada get on my nerve. Hint to the hint, I was a completely different person <laughs> five years ago. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've taken that away from a book that I've read. Um, and it basically says that you have to love people as they are at that moment in time. You can't create who you want them to be, your perception of who you want them to be. You have to just accept that person's for who they are and respect their growth. So if some you can't force change on anybody. You should just allow a person to change. And in marriage, a lot of times what people try to do is force that their partner to change. They try to force their partner to be what they want them to be. So we have to really take a step back and not be selfish and really be like, all right, our partner is changing. Let's respect their growth. But then also our partner has to respect our growth too as people too, because we aren't, we're never going to be the same people we are even as yesterday and today. So let me ask you this. It's just like, because this is on that, that I wanted to delve into. It's just like when you're initially like with a person and it's just like, we start, like, I know you're talking about like, you know, a person changing, let's say like you in a position where you're with a person for let's say like two or three years, right? And mm -hmm. you, you really like put that time in and you establish that time, but you might not necessarily have like had those kind of talks. Cause it's just like, we're, we're, we're more so like in a predicament where it's just like, I can tell you honestly, like from my perspective, like I wasn't necessarily like thinking about like, you know, my credit score and my finances, like even just like two or three years ago, but you know, I was dating at this time and it was like, Without having, but were you dating to be married, or were you just dating? Yeah, well, well, you know, yeah, like I, like I was dating aimlessly, but like in in a situation like that, because like, it's different when you're dating aimlessly; those things don't matter to you. But like, so in a situation where you are like dating for like you know, let's say like like two plus years, and it's just like okay, this is the person that I'm with consistently, but you necessarily like haven't really like had those talks or those kind of like those kind of. I feel like those talks in, should into, be like, brought up at some point during those two years. Because if you're with someone for two years, eventually you guys are going to move forward with moving in together or moving forward with the plan or the idea of moving forward to that next step of getting married. Some people don't want to get married. Some mm -hmm. people actually do what's called a common law marriage where they stay together for many years. And, you know, after I think in New Jersey, I think after like 10 years, of, if you guys live together and are together and share joint assets, you guys are legally like you have a common law marriage mm -hmm. where you don't have to legally go down to the courthouse and get married. You're kind of like married. But if something happens to that person, you don't have the rights for that person. Like you're not their next of kin. Like their next of kin would be either like their parent, if they're still alive or their siblings. So like marriage is kind of like, you're kind of responsible for someone's whole life. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's a lot more that goes into it than just love. Like, all right, if my husband right now was to fall off of a building and be on life support and they come to me and they're like, you know, Ms. Brown, your husband, he's on, you know, there's really nothing we can do for him. Would you like to keep him on life support? And his mom is like, I want to keep him on life support. Ultimately, I don't care what she has to say. The decision is mine. And if I want to pull the plug, I'm going to pull the plug. But that's because we're married. Even like in the decisions of funeral planning, anything like that, mm -hmm. like life insurance policies and all those things like that, those all come into play when you get married because you're literally, you have, you're now responsible for a, another whole life. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, and I can say from like, like from my own personal experience, it's probably really only like maybe one person I, I, I would have said that I would even considered even marrying like just one woman it, because like I like when I look at like the scope of those things I say like wait a minute like you mean like this means I'm just it's like this 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 in the in the fourth and then like I guess I have like I, I don't want to say PTSD but like just hearing like people's stories about like going through like divorces and stuff I'm just like oh no it's just like it's not as simple as like oh yeah you know we signed these papers and everything is oh no divorce is, is good especially you know from 
personal experience is hell on hot wheels okay all right you guys if you don't get married if you don't want to get married because i'm telling you it's paperwork on paperwork court dates and they don't tell you everything and then you sit there you think oh i filled this paperwork out i'm good to go and they're like nope you got 45 days to fill this paperwork out or you're still married to this person forever mm. and then it's like no like so you have to really like understand what you're, you're getting yourself into and also you shouldn't go into a marriage with the idea of you guys getting divorced. A marriage should be like, for me, I'm traditional. Like it should be like something that you should go into and be like, All right, I'm gonna be concrete and we're gonna go through this and this is it and this final. That's why the next time that I get married, yes, I did say the next time. The next time Nobody's that I get married, you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to make sure that this person is stable. And just like a whole person all around. When I say a whole person, I mean like I don't have to repair them in any way, shape, or form. I'm not, I don't care if your credit score is not the best mm -hmm. or you know whatever. But I'm talking about like even emotionally as a person because like in a marriage, I shouldn't be having to pay Bob the Builder and fixing you up and all those things like that. Like we should be able to thing. move forward in life emotionally. We shouldn't be emotionally abusing each other or neglecting each other emotionally. We should be able to understand each other's love languages and things like that. And, and that's one thing that yeah. I kind of kinda wanted to move forward because like, you know, we said like, you know, the legal form of marriage is kind of like a business, but it's just like, you know, we kind of seen like, you know, situations where you know, people chase, uh, like, go after the wrong thing. Sometimes it's like, oh yeah, you know, I want, I want stability, stability and security. But then on like the emotional spectrum of it, it's just like, we yeah, some people get married for money and then yeah. they, they're emotionally neglected. Um, so then they end up, you know, in a, doing in a, in extramarital a, yeah. affairs and things like that. And just so that y'all know, if you do get caught in an extramarital affair and it's your fault, you have to pay your spouse alimony until they decide to get married again. So alimony is basically like child so, support wait, for married people. Wait, 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 wait. Let's stop. Stop. Pause y'all in the base. <laughs> Say that again. This, this if is, you get caught cheating. And this is a legality. This right? is a legality. If you get caught cheating and I said, and I have proof and I go to the court and I'm like, I want to divorce him because I call him cheating on me or you beating on me or whatever, you have to pay me alimony until I get married. So if you make it whatever and I decide my alimony is $1,500 a month, you have to pay me that every month until I decide I want to get married again. This yes. shit sounds like a scam. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> But, you guys need to really understand what you're getting into when you look into getting married. Like marriage is a goal, mm -hmm. but you have to understand what is that goal ultimately going to bring you? Like, are you in it for the long run? Because uh, honestly, when you say your vows, you say till death do us part in sickness and in health, all those things like that. I've seen people leave people who were sick, who and this, and all those things and, like and that. This, this, this is a fucked up story. And I had actually read, I read about this. I forgot. Who he was dating at the time, but um, one of the, like ushers, I think like wives or fiancés or something, she was like in a coma for like two years. And as soon as she got out the coma, he had the divorce papers. I'm like, oh I'm like, damn, dog, like that's that's kind of fucked up, usher. <laughs> like, like, oh I'm like, I like, I like your music. Like, I'll be sitting there singing, caught up, but like, like reading them, just like, damn, like you a whole like asshole for that one, bro. Like, I can't co-sign that. So. Um, and, and this is one thing that I tell people too. I'm just like, a marriage isn't really like necessary. Like, like it's not supposed to be like a level up your, to your relationship. It's like not one of those things. That's and marriage make... can't fix anything in a yeah. relationship that's already broken. Like you shouldn't think like, all right, my relationship is fucked up, but if we get married, it's going to fix everything. And that's why it's I was not a save all be all. Actually marriage amplifies, if anything, the problems, because now you are legally bonded to this and person. This, and this is, and this is where like the problem comes in because now it's just like, like you said, if those values aren't instilled like in the beginning and you do get married. So now because those things are resolved, it feels more like an obligation. Yep. But, um, and again, this is one thing, these th things that, um, like you kind of like got to put in spectrum because I was actually talking to one of my friends recently and she said her mom and dad have been married for 50 years, but, and, and this is like a true trial and testament of it. Now she said they've been together prior, like years prior and like, you know, going through the process of like being married. She said, yeah, it was really like at those times where it's just like, you know, they possibly like could have gotten divorced or, or whatever, but it's just like, you really got to go through the trials, like the real hardships of like, you know, being married and being together with each other to like really 
reap the benefits of it because as we can tell any relationship that we ever enter or any kind of marriage anything like that is never easy and it's going to take a lot of work and understanding that when you do marry this person you are saying like i am agreeing to try my best to do my best by this marriage by this relationship by this mutual bond in all aspects in emotional and mental and physical, financial, and all these different aspects yep. to make sure that we succeed in this thing. And that's how you get to those 50 years. If you want to put yourself in a position where you just like, like you said, you go into that mindset, like, oh, I'm going to go there. I'm, I'm doing it for this. I'm getting this. I'm expecting this. Then it's just like, it's, 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 it's kind of going to crumble. And know? people think that marriage is just like happiness, sunshine and stuff like that. What people don't realize is a lot of married people do not get along. Like at all, like at all. And then also in a marriage, like I feel like one value that I actually was talking about this last night, that was just so funny to someone who was also married, um, is that when you're married, you shouldn't have single friends. You should have other married friends who you hang out with. Because think about it. If you're with your single friends, they single people do single things. So, all right. You you're a married woman and you your single friends are like, girl, let's go hit the club, like let's go out. They're gonna do single things, engage with men, and you're a whole married woman in the club. A man will come up to you, and you know, temptation is the devil. Even for men, like you hang around your boys and stuff like that. And if your boys are single and they dog, you go like dogs gonna run together and be wolf wolfing together. So you know, you have to hang with your married friends and have an understanding of marriage. Talk about y'all marriages together. Like, have a safe space where y'all could, like, relate and, you know, grow. Even, like, join, like, maybe a, if you're a religious person, join a religious community. And if you feel like your marriage or your relationship is going through a trial assessment, go to someone who you trust who will give you an unbiased opinion. Couples therapy is not uncommon. And it's actually really therapeutic for people to go to couples therapy because sometimes you need a middle person to sit there and be like, all right, look, both of y'all are right, but y'all have to come to a middle ground to understand that y'all can't hear each other over talking over each other. Y'all yeah. have to understand that he feel this way, she feels this way, but let's come to a solution. And a lot of people can't come to a solution when y'all both are arguing, screaming, and yelling, yet the point goes like this all and, the time. And this is one thing that I, I, I want to, I think is like more targeted to like, to our generation. I kind of feel like um, we have a tough time for that because in a sense we have too many options. And and I say that to say this, it would just be like, and because I've been guilty of this sometimes. And I, I'm 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 being transparent. I've been guilty when like, you know, where I feel like something might be like a little bit too tough. And I get in that mindset where I'm just like, well, damn, I'll just be better off somewhere else. And it, and, and, and it is, it is like uh, like like a well, my up. mama always said the grass always looks greener on the other side because it's um, what you call it was fertilized with uh -huh. bullshit. So with that being said, <laughs> it's never good on the other side. And you know it never crazy. is worth the risk. And if you're going to be married to somebody, you make a commitment to somebody, if you make a commitment to anything, stick to that commitment. And if you're not going to stick to that commitment, be honest with yourself first mm -hmm. and that person. And you want to know what's crazy too? It's just like when we do, when we are in a position, we are single and we have those options, like, damn, it ain't shit out here. <laughs> no, it really ain't shit out there. Like, I'm telling y'all right now, I'm a whole single for ain't shit out here, but ain't shit people. And that's just a fact. It's a whole bunch of broken people trying to love other broken fucking people. Damn, so, so stop coming for me. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm not coming on for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what's going on here, the slander. I'm mean, not here, child. Slander, y'all. Yeah, it's, it's a Gemini full moon. Y'all should be feeling great right now because my I, sign is feeling it right now. So I happy. know I'm feeling good, you know, for this show. But I'm just saying, I'm speaking this from the real, like from mm. experience. Like even just being in long term relationships, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people who have been in long term relationships can understand this. After a certain point, you are out of the honeymoon phase and then you really look at your partner like damn yeah. this motherfucker really is annoying and i really <laughs> cannot stand this person and then you really start to think like can i really spend my life with somebody who mm -hmm. chew like this can't clean like this and all this stuff like that and then you think all right leaving these dirty ass fucking dishes this is in the sink <laughs> <laughs> and then you think you're going to be with that person for 50 plus years no way like you have to really sit and really like think to yourself like is this worth it well and th and this is one one thing that i really learned and it was just like you know 
and like you said, you never stay infatuated forever. So a true testament of saying that like you're in love with this person is your ability like to like overcome those moments. And when you do experience those moments that remind you that say, this is why I chose this person. It's like those are the ones that we like, you know, really need to highlight. Like I like those sappy Facebook stories like that. Um, that be like, you know, the husband's about to leave his wife and she like, can you just carry me over the threshold one more time? <laughs> like for a week so that our daughter doesn't know. And then she fucking dies or some shit like that. So it's supposed to make you realize the importance of loving the person that you with and why you fell in love with the person. Yeah. But in reality, like what I took away from that is that sometimes when you do get in long term relationships like that, mm -hmm. you forget why you love that person, mm -hmm. why you're with that person, why you got with that person, because, you know, then the quarrel and starts yeah. and, you know, and a lot of times we get with people and not everybody's going to be a yes man. You know, we do have conflicts of personalities. Not everybody All is the, the same. Time. You're going to clash. Nobody is going to sit there and be like, Oh my God, our relationship is perfect. We don't argue. We don't do nothing. We and walk you, the dog, the cat, the ferret. I don't know if you've seen a uh, girl's trip, but like, um, did you see that movie? Yeah, and when like, they all pretend, like where yeah, she pretended she her marriage is perfect, perfect, and her husband was time. cheating on her, and he had a whole was about to have a whole side baby. And you know what? At the end of the day, like nobody's perfect, no matter how much they try to outwardly project that, like mm -hmm. they're not. But it's how you feel on the inside too, and how that person makes you feel on the inside. And I always say, keep whatever's going on at home at home mm -hmm. like don't bring your home stuff out into the street because that really also can ruin your marriage too yeah. like in a sense like because then you got all these different opinions on how you should handle your marriage even with your parents mm -hmm. like we love our parents dearly but you know their advice ain't always the best advice they look at us like still they're little babies so and sometimes the advice is is unsolicited and, and it's biased. And this and this is one thing that I wanted to I'm kind of backtracking here, but again, but like you're saying, like you know, hanging out with like other married couples, and like one thing that I was also like, you know, really considering that things that like people should consider doing is seeking counsel from people who have gone the length, you know, since yeah. like really saying like people who have been married 20, 30, 40 years and yeah, you say, should like, talk to people like that like, and see that and say, like, okay. I'm at this point in my marriage. I know you, if you didn't experience like the same thing, I know you had like a trial where you kind of felt like this. How can we overcome this as a couple? Like, because in, in this, in this one thing, like, you know, we have to kind of take from our predecessors and say like, okay, like they did it for so long. How did they do it? And, you know, really get in that insight. Cause you know, our insight art isn't always the best and the ones that surround us though, does, is, is, isn't always the best. So we, sometimes we do have to seek counsel from those people in those long-standing relationships. Yeah. yeah. And even those important. people in the long-standing relationships will tell you like there's it with a lot of rainbows, there's a lot of storms and uh, rain, a lot. Like, a lot. So you have to understand that if you're getting into a marriage and that's something that you really want to commit to, you have to understand that you're in it for the good mm -hmm. and the bad, yeah. the pretty and the ugly. And you you have to say that with conviction. You have to believe that yourself. You have to say like, okay, this per whatever whatever trial or test, and I'm not gonna say whatever. Like you know, there's extreme cases like of, of abuse and infidelity and things like that. But side as, children. Yeah, but like like as far as like you know, you really have to make that commitment to say, okay, I am going to st stand the test of time with this person through everything. I mean, like I said, not the extreme cases where you are just like being completely disrespected, like you, like where you just don't feel like right about yourself in a in a completely different space. But if you know, we've all have y'all having like difference in opinions because you know you get to a point like even in your relationship, we start arguing about like stupid shit, like you know what I mean? Like, oh, you ain't bring me no food. Like, you know what I mean? Like, say, so you was well, you, you left the milk carton a little bit open this morning. Yeah, come on. You drank the last of the juice. I always saving that. Like, 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 like little, 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 stuff. little petty arguments like that. And it's one of those things that's just like, it's, 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 it's going to happen. And it's like, those are the things that you're going to work, work And then out. also, you do get bored. I'm not going to lie. Even, but that's just in regular life in general. Like, yeah. you do get bored and you feel like, oh, I want excitement in my life. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so you notice, like, I men see. will go through midlife crisis where they go bald and then they decide they want to get a motorcycle and want to hit on young girls again and stuff like that. I still like, got it. I still <laughs> got it type of phase. And it's like, you don't even need to do all that when your wife is at home and she think your bald <laughs> ass is the best man what's ever. That, uh, what's that saying? It's just like, if you want, if you want excitement, go to a fucking amusement park. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with that being said like you know we do get bored with people like even in regular relationships you're gonna get bored with your partner but 
if you go out looking for like. someone new, like think about it, you get with somebody new, it's fun and exciting in the beginning, but just as quickly as it's exciting, that mm-hmm. fire is going to die down just like that. It's just and like you're going to realize that, wow, both of these people fucking suck. It's, and now I don't want either. And it's just like a high, it's a rush, like for that moment. Like you say, it's just like, oh, I want to feel alive again. Like that. But, um, but again, you know, like that, that comes in a point of like, you know, if you're feeling like that, you kind of got to express that to your partner and see what y'all can do together. Maybe y'all need to experience something new. Your marriage should be a safe space. Mm-hmm. And actually, not even just your marriage, your relationship at the end of the day, no matter what differences y'all go through, mm-hmm. should be your safe space. If that's the person who you've decided that, all right, we're going to establish something together, Mm -hmm. that should be your safe space. It shouldn't be a space where you feel like, all right, I'm constantly being attacked. I'm constantly being demeaned. I'm constantly being belittled. It should be like a safe space where it's like, all right, babe, even though I know we're having our differences, like Mm -hmm. I really had a rough day today. Can I just come and just tell you and like unload this on you? You could tell me about your day. Like we can just, and then y'all get that out and then y'all move about the day. Like that's something, but don't like, you know, like, just overburden your partner too with mm-hmm. all your stuff and just not listen to anything they have to say either. Like marriage, like again, any relationship should be equal in any sense, shape, form. Like nothing in life is equal, but you should try to at least try to make your relationship equal where it's like, all right, if I can bend to you, you can bend to me about anything and not have a biased opinion. You shouldn't cut them off. You should listen with a whole heart and non-judgment. And that that's just how I feel. Like when when I listen to people vent, like mm-hmm. I really try to like take the eye out of the vent yeah. venting. Like I try to take myself out of it because a lot of times what we do is we project ourselves into people's problems and we're like, well, I wouldn't do this and that and the third thing. And it's like you kind of like make the person feel like their problem is insignificant because then you made the whole situation about yourself. Yeah, and that's that's and, and oh, I said I, I, that's one thing that um I hello to, anybody on Instagram. I had to like you know really like take in consideration to myself and I was just like um even though like. It's something that that I didn't see was like really serious. I had to take in consideration that okay, this is some this is an issue for this person. And I need to hear them out, even though like I didn't like agree with like the extremity of the issue. But again, it's like it's it's it's, it's all you know taking that time, and it, it it's really maturity. It's really it really is a thing of maturity, and that's just one of the things that you really have to like go through through the test of time. And mm-hmm. then you also have to think about it <clears throat> if you bring into children into this equation and things like that. You also have to think about what type of environment would you want your children to grow up in? Would you want them to see two loving parents who love each other? Who now your child when they grow up, they're gonna be like, wow, I want to project that type of love that my parents gave me and I see my mom give my dad to someone else onto someone else and then they meet someone from a broken home who never had that and that person's like listen motherfucker get the fuck up off me like I don't even want all that like and then they're like why don't why don't you understand love like this is love like I'm just trying to love you and they're like touch me again and I'll stab you like so you have to understand like what type of environment (laughs) 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 you have to understand like what do you want your children to see at the end of the day? Do you want them to remember their parents being loving parents? Like, do you want them to see them saying like, oh, well, my dad loved my mom, like, you know, through the good, the bad, and the ugly, like they argued in private and things like that. Because when you argue in front of your kids and things like that, or when you do things in front of your kids, kids are like sponges. They are literally sponges. Like that's how I look at children. They are literally like, sponges they absorb everything and say nothing like and then later on in life they spill all that into other people into their lives into all that stuff like that because that sponge is so full now they're spilling it out onto everybody Mm. so it's like what do you want your kids to see like i feel like for me now i'm about to be 30 in two years next month like i'll be 28 i want my kids to see me with someone who treats me with respect who values me as not only just a woman, as a mother, as a provider, and all those things like that. And even if it's by myself, I would I would like that. Like I grew up and for a brief amount of time in life, I had my father present in my life for seven years, God rest his soul. And you know, in those seven years, I can tell y'all that my father, I didn't know until I was adult all the things, you know, that was really going on in my parents' marriage. But from what I saw as a kid was that my father treated my mother like she was the queen of the earth. Nobody could touch my mother's spot. My mother didn't have to work if she didn't want to. She was taken care of. My mom still has love letters from 1997 
in our basement from my father. My father made sure it wasn't on holidays. He didn't just get her cards on Valentine's Day. And like that. It would just be random days. He would think about my mom. He'd go pick up a card or he would even just handwrite her a piece of, on a piece of paper. Like, hello, my darling love. Like, I just miss you today. Da, 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 da. And write like just kept the romance alive and things like that. And that's something that I want for myself. And that's a standard that I set for myself that I want in a relationship. Is it unrealistic? Probably. But, Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> you know what Stop. I'm saying? Stop it. Like, <laughs> at the end of the day, like that's something that I saw growing up. So that's the type of love that I was expecting as an adult. And then when I got out into the dating world mm -hmm. and realized that a lot of people did not grow up with that. Like, yes, I grew up majority of my life without a father and with a single mother in a single mother home who was a provider for us. But at the end of the day, my mother never made us feel like we were without anything. She never made, she always kept my father's memory alive. Mm -hmm. And she always made sure that any projection of his image and his love towards her was that of goodness and wholeness and that he treated her with the utmost respect. So my father met my mother and they had me and then a year and a half later, they were married. And that was the end of that. And he got married at the same age that I'm about to turn right now. So now that we got really like, you know, like the background of like all of this, now we want to kind of get into it. Like what actually makes marriage material? Like what makes like you say, like what makes it like what makes it say like okay like this is the person that i want to marry not just based off like they were married from 1996 to 1999 until up until he died so like not, not just the base of all like okay like i love this person from a, like a standpoint of like like a mature mind i'm sorry 1994 i'm i apologize 1994 to 1999 so from like like a mature aspect like now looking forward like can we say like what is marriage material when i say that like okay this is the person that i'm going to marry what are the qualities that you know are standard or just like that across the board that should really be in any marriage for like the test of time i feel like marriage material should be everybody say hi to jj go ahead go back in the room because back in the room um i feel like marriage material you should find someone who's stable and consistent as far as not even just within the relationship, but within themselves, mm -hmm. they're sure of themselves. <clears throat> they're, they're giving you consistent vibes, um, but also the effort that someone puts into themselves and into you mm -hmm. and what, what are they investing into as far as themselves and you? Are they, are they investing into a better future for themselves, for you, or are they self-destructive? Mm -hmm. Like you have to think about all these things into going into marriage. Then you have to look about like things like, how they are in family life. And I really say you really don't know somebody until you live with them. And that I'm not saying don't shack fact. don't don't shack up with somebody, you know, and because you really you really, really, really don't know somebody until you're in their comfort zone. When y'all both in y'all comfort zone. Message. So when you live with somebody, it's a whole different realm and you really get to see how a person is. And once you really see how somebody is, it's like could I really see myself spending the rest of my, my life with somebody who can't clean the bathroom, who pees all over the toilet seat, all these things like that. Like little things like that you would be like, all right, you know, those little things turn into bigger things. So you have to really think about like a lot. You have to take into account of a lot of things that y'all are doing in y'all relationship and everything like that. How's the relationship going? How do you feel about the relationship? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the person as time passes? Some people say they knew from the moment that they met somebody that they mm -hmm. wanted to be with them for the rest of their life. Other people are like, well, it took me like 10 years. Look at Chris, Chrissy and Jim Jones. They still aren't married. And she proposed to him. I was mm -hmm. never proposing to no man. So I'm just putting this out there right now. Never. Any dude expecting me to propose to you to make any hints about marriage if i ask you if we are getting married and we are going somewhere and you give me uncertain vibes guess the fuck what you're gonna be out on the streets looking uncertain as fuck with somebody else <laughs> never say never but in in this this is I mean, i'm gonna break this down into like some some key things i think like every relationship and this is standard like for before you even get married yeah. it has to be mutual respect one first and foremost Trust, communication. Trust love. is a big one. And if you don't trust someone, mm -hmm. you the relationship's not gonna work. And this is and this is one thing that like that I, I, I really learned. It was just like you're not always going to trust the person 100 percent No, you are always going to have like some shadowy moment of doubt, and that is okay on both sides, but and this is where the respect 
comes into play. When you have that respect for a person, you give them the benefit of the doubt. Even if something like looks like a little like like skeptical or shaky, like, you know, I wouldn't say immediately like jump off the roof, like kind of piece things together. If something if you know something like not right, you can fill in the anchor. It's like I need to approach this. But like, you know, respect. I, I feel like when when you have those moments when you are feeling like a little doubt of a person, put the respect into to the person and approach them about it first and say, like, you know, I'm feeling uncertain about this. You did this and I'm kind of feeling also, I'm tones, feeling yeah I'm tones feeling tones in conversations and how conversations are had and time there's a time and place for everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like in partnerships sometimes certain partners try to embarrass their partners too in front of people. I'm not saying everybody does that, but how you how you talk to people, your tone and how you talk to your partner, you should learn different tones for different conversations, like mm -hmm. how to set a certain tone. Like if you're always confrontational with your partner, mm -hmm. always hostile with your partner, well, even with just general questions, that puts somebody on guard. And then now they're just on like fight or flight mode all the time. And yeah. that makes someone very uncertain in a relationship as well, too. So even in a marriage, like, so you have to understand, like, People get people who are married. Sometimes they separate, but they get right back together. Like I've seen people who who've been married, they get divorced, and then get right back married to each other. Like so, it's like you ha you have to understand yourself mm -hmm. as a person too when you go into a marriage. But you have to understand your partner. And again, like I said previously in the debate, you have to understand your partner's love language. Not everybody has the same love language. A lot of people have different types of love languages that you're gonna have to learn about your partner. Like. There are certain people who don't like to be talked to in a certain way because they have PTSD or maybe a certain partner did something to them or a certain family member did something to them mm -hmm. as a child and they don't like that may trigger them in a sense. So you have to understand your partner's love language. And that takes a lot of compassion. Like mm -hmm. you have to be very compassionate and empathetic when you're in a relationship because you have to take your feelings out of the equation. Like, all right, well, I wouldn't feel this way if somebody did this to me or whatever, and be like, Put yourself kind of in that person's shoes and be like, all right, I wouldn't want this done to me and I wouldn't want somebody to do this to me. So I should really consider my partner's feelings in mm -hmm. a sense and talk it over with my partner first. And one thing that I feel like this 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 really applies to us. Don't try to resolve things via text message. No, because it gets lost in, mis in, in, in miscommunications because you can't always read a tone through a text message. If y'all going through something, I would say like, you know, don't try to like fix the, and don't make a quick fix. Take that time in that space. If you at work and like, I, like if I'm at home, we need or to something, talk later. Yeah. just say like, you know, like, look, I need to talk to you. You go about your day. You do what you're doing. You finish up at work. I'm at home. I'm doing whatever, cooking, cleaning, whatever the situation is. And then when we get there, you know, I'm not going to you know, like go straight into your face. All right. Can we talk? Take some time on wine. You know what I mean? And then take that space. Like, okay, can we talk yeah, let's, about Like, this? take some private and time. Again, take time. And then also a lot of things that a lot of couples a lot of couples lose, too, with that, why they seek excitement is because you get kind of stuck in routine mm -hmm. and, and complacent. And complacency is also the killer of all relationships and dreams. When you're complacent in your spot in a relationship, mm -hmm. you're just like, well, I just do whatever, be whatever, whatever. And it's like, no, at the end of the day, you have to keep things alive in your relationship, in growth. your life, growth, growth things so like that. that. All right. You and your partner, when y'all first met, y'all used to go out for ice cream and roller skating. I'm not saying do this every night, but like, you know, set aside, like maybe like a date night every month and like do like. Um, there was like cute little hacks on Pinterest where they like had penny mm -hmm. date nights and things like that where like you you have a penny jar and you put like little tabs on them and you pull a penny out of what mm -hmm. to do and things like like keep the relationship alive too as well. Be spontaneous sometimes, like you know what I mean? Like and like just like go out and do something. Look, look for like when you're looking for someone who's marriage material like that, you have to look for someone who is willing to put forth those kind of efforts and things like that. Like, you know, you can't look for somebody who's just going to be like constantly guarded. Like, nah, nah I'm not all that. We like, just went to McDonald's. Like, you want to go out to eat again? Like, I don't want to go out every weekend all the time. Like, I want to, I want to, like, you know, like, you have to look for someone who's willing to be like, all right, look, I love you. Like, all right. 
this weekend is our weekend. We just yeah. gonna go. It's just gonna be us. Nobody else. No phones. No whatever. Whatever it takes to make it feel like you know, bring that spark back alive and things like that. Because people think when you get into a relationship, mm-hmm. y'all are gonna be like, oh, we're gonna have sex twenty four seven. That is not the case. Yo, I'm telling you right now, people in relationships probably have. Less sex than single people. I'm just gonna be real with y'all. Hold That's on, wait, wait, fact. wait. Let's not go too far now. <laughs> let's not go too far now. Okay, like but it's not 24 seven, but let's like it's not it's like you know, kind of sometimes you got schedule appointments. Like yeah, all right, so I'll see you on Wednesday. Like yeah, yeah. okay. Like I mean, like you know, you might go through like a good you know two to three day span, you know, but like. I don't know. I don't think I went like. I mean, like when we were like in a fight. When it, <laughs> if there's a situation where y'all arguing and something like getting resolved, like, all right, yeah, it might be like a good week, week and a half. But like, well, just like a typical, like, it, you might have like them off weeks where it's like, you know, you might go two to three days and y'all do it back to back. And then it's like another two days and y'all do it like three days in a row. It's just, it's just like, but if y'all fighting, yeah, expect to be holding it in for like a good, like, week, week and a half. Or you rub and one the out. The you day. get, they hold out for months. Months, like months. I've heard. I've listen. I work with older people, okay. So I've heard people be like, "I ain't get my husband sex in six months. He is getting it from somebody else, somewhere else." Sis. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just tell you that straight up. Yeah, like, but, and like, and I'm like, and like he ain't trying nothing. Like, you know what I mean? He ain't out of pain while you sleeping or nothing like that. Just so like, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, being a realist at the end of the day, like. Try to spice things up, you know. What about like like sex? But if you're bored with your like, I'm gonna be real with you. Don't hold on to somebody either that you really don't want mm-hmm. because you're holding back someone too who someone else would probably appreciate too. And that also goes into marriage material because it's like if you really don't see yourself with someone and you really don't have a genuine connection with someone and you're mm-hmm. just in that relationship because you don't want to be single and you're just like, all right, I'm gonna just hold on to this person because I really don't want to be single, but um I don't want them to be single either. Well, let, because, let me ask you, you this: know, How do you differentiate between you know not really being who so, with somebody, not really wanting to be with this person, and just going through that trial, just going through the tough? You time? you know the difference. Um, someone who really doesn't want to be with someone will be looking for like kind of like I always say they're like a rat looking for an escape plan. Yeah. Like they look for like a way out. So in a sense, like they're hoping that someone or something is going to drop out of the sky mm-hmm. and come like and save them from their relationship and be their saving grace and out of what? their relationship. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, like I was I was messing with this with this uh young woman and uh I knew it wasn't going anywhere, but it was just like all right, well, we just like we just here right now, we just doing what we do, we get together every weekend or whatever. But like it clearly wasn't going anywhere. It was like already established, like way before that. Like, okay, this isn't going to be anything. But we still like entertaining it, and then it was just like, I guess she was just like, no. And I was just like, all right, well, that's it. <laughs> kind of, but I didn't, I didn't have like any kind of like like that breakup moment. I was just like, okay. He was like, okay. Yeah, because like, and, and I guess it was like that mindset where I like I knew it was like it wasn't going anywhere. So it was just like, eh, well, right. I can attest to this. I've had you, you spending too much time around me. <laughs> I spend I do spend too much time around y'all. I test, I test this. <laughs> um, you know, like being a single and also being in long term relationships and also being a married person. I've seen the spectrum of life and and differently. Like when I was single, a lot of married men they play and. I do not like that. Like, I don't like that. If you have a good wife at home who is doing stuff like that, you should not do that to her, like, at all. Like, you should really consider, like, being a good husband. Like, would you want your wife out here in these streets doing the stuff that you're doing? No. I'm pretty sure you would. In, in women's inboxes talking about some, you beautiful, like, do you squirt chocolate milk? <laughs> Beyond done with y'all after that. <laughs> I won't. I won't play. I won't play that game anymore. Like that, that dumbass. <laughs> no. But all right. jokes aside. Um, I forgot to put my phone on. Um, Do not necessarily. Disturb. But all jokes aside, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you're a married person, you should really think about your vows at the end of the day like before you cheat before you do anything think about like the commitment you made before whatever higher power you decided to commit to like and say like 
all right, I made this commitment to this person. Why would I go behind that, their back and do that yeah. and do all this? And that goes into trust because that person who you're married to is trusting you not to do the stuff that you're doing. So it's fucked up, dog. It's like even if you're not married and you guys are in the stages of getting there, like you're engaged and things like that. Like I've heard horror stories about people who were engaged and their fiancés are out cheating. I don't know if y'all watch Black Ink Crew, Chicago, and Don was cheating with the strippers. Still was cheating after he got married. They thought it was gonna fix everything. Just cheating, 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 cheating. And it's like if you was gonna cheat, why did you marry her? Like you should have just left her alone and let. In, Someone in, else love her the way she needed to be loved. Yes, y'all got kids or whatever, but at the end of the day, that's where co-parenting comes into play. And that's why we shouldn't bring these kids into this world if we're not sure of our relationships and ourselves. And I'm saying this as a mother and as a single parent because I, I have two children that I brought into this world and I'm not with their fathers and it burns my soul that I'm not. But it's also like, I have to remember that I have to set a precedent for my daughters. I have daughters. I don't have sons. If I had a son, it would be completely different. I'll still try to set that precedent for him in a sense. But at the end of the day, I know that if I do decide to bring another life into this world, me, my child, my husband, we all going to share the same last name and we all going to live under the same household and that's going to be that. And my finger is going to be iced out. And like and like, so, like what you were saying was like like the, with the people at the Black Ink Crow. Um, I guess, like, you know, that really boils down to, like, not really understanding, like, you know, you know, um, like, really understanding the core values of marriage and, like, really, even the core values of, like, relationships. Like, don't think that, like, oh, just because I'm not married that, like, cheating is okay. It's, just, it's, 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 never, is not it's just okay. never okay. And it's, it's to the point if you're going to entertain that behavior at all, you shouldn't really commit to yourself at all like before you even get married you need to make sure that those vows are and those beliefs are instilled in you and your relationship before you even propose that needs to be solid before it goes any further if you feel like you want to play the field play the field and be single and date don't get into a committed relationship if you feel like you want to juggle mm -hmm. multiple people at a time mm -hmm. date there are levels to dating you don't have to just jump from like all right we went on two dates you my boyfriend now and we actually went on this on the previous yada debates where we actually brought that if i can find that i would, will say we had the talking dating exclusive dating yep. relationship we, we definitely we, talked we, about we that kinda, we kind of had and it, it's, it's like a written out format out shout out to bo blanco because he actually do that my you know i appreciate that bo um so yeah, um, and while we're here, I, I kind of want to touch on this too because this is one thing that we do see. Um, I want ice cream. Okay, when I'm done with the debate. Okay. This is one thing that we also mm -hmm. do see ahead, couples uh, struggle with too is mm -hmm. finances. Like, and, and you know, now we're getting away from like the spectrum of uh, like, uh, like the the romantic and the mental and emotional aspect of it. Finances because oh, this, finances this is will one, destroy a relationship and it's immediately. Just like, and it's just like I haven't I haven't really like had that issue where it's just like, I mean, I, I, and I've said this on the show before, where it's just like, like pretty much all the women I've dated always made more money than me. Like, and it was like, it was never really like a situation, but when you go into like a situation when you, it, like where you explain like the legality of it, when like, you know, your credit score, your finances, like- you know, And then the if you get divorced, like, the higher earning spouse, if it's a fault marriage, if you're getting divorced because it's a fault, like if something happened where it's your fault or whoever fault it is, you're going to have to pay alimony and you wait, have wait. to pay their lawyer costs, court costs, all those costs. Wait, wait, hold on. The person who makes the more. more yeah, the person who makes the most money. And if you don't have a prenuptial agreement, yep. I see they got married. They know they can't catch them out right now. It's like, <laughs> no, let me, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so you have to understand like so, all these things before you go into a marriage. Like, so what, so what would you say as far as like being marriage material? Where would you want to see? Let's not even say like finance, but your security, like your level of security, even though that's not like the main thing that like, you know, that people get married for. It is important. It really still is. important. I want because... someone with an ambitious mind. Mm -hmm. If your marriage material to me, this is marriage material. Again, this is for me, myself, personally, not y'all. 
like I'm just saying for me, I'm going to be seeing men that I'm like, oh my God, like I will marry him. Like I, I could see us being married. He has to be ambitious. I don't care if he's a garbage truck driver, if he works in a warehouse or whatever, he's getting his feet wet, whatever. As long as he has that ambition to know like, all right, this is not my, this is not my resting place. This is the starting point of me getting to where I need to be in life, my, my ascension, then yes. I'm going to do that. I will res I will sit by that man and watch him grow and be that. But if he's comfortable in his spot of that, and like, yeah, you know, I make $13. Now I'm good at where I'm at. You know, I'm going to stay here for 35 <laughs> years and do nothing. Like, no, that no, I need someone who's ambitious, mm -hmm. but also who makes me feel secure in my relationship where I don't have to. I shouldn't have to correct any female in any situation in my relationship. And that's one thing. And then also we trust each other mutually, not just I'm trusting you. You don't trust me or I don't trust you, and et cetera, et cetera. Like I don't want a relationship where we have to run through each other's phones or social medias or like we're on social media. And I'm like, well, who this girl always commenting on your status and stuff like that. I should feel secure enough in my relationship to be like, this man makes me feel so secure. I don't have to worry about no girls on social media because I know at the end of the day, he's not worried about them. Mm -hmm. He's worried about me and me only. Like that's how that's marriage material to and me. I, I think this is, is this is important too. Like, you know, somebody that you can like, and this goes into like, you know, as far as like, you know, growth oh and, and keep you know what else that I just on, thought about? Hold on, no, no, cut me off. I'm dog. Sorry. <laughs> so at, this goes into like the point of like like growth and like, you know, keeping the excitement alive is setting couple goals together. Mm -hmm. And not not relationship goals, not that shit you see on Facebook, but like real like say, like, look. We should save up for like for like a week trip, like or do something like that, or let's go to the gym. Let's get ourselves right right together. You know what I mean? Like setting goals like that together will I feel like will really help people, like because it seems like you see like partnership actively. You know what I mean? Like in like a situation like you know I put some money for my check, I you put some money for your check. We save it for this vacation. We go out together. We we we're gonna save up for this. Let's do like a big anniversary party for ourselves. Or let's go, let's do like a hike. Let's do something like that we've never done before. Setting those kind of goals together, I think it's something that's like, that's really strong and solid and can keep things uh, big on like the growth side and like keeping things like a lot between like, like romantically, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's just like, that's my version. Man. I would say like. But, I, but I really do agree with what you just said, but I also feel like something that you and I also discussed is that you should also be able to feel vulnerable with your partner. Mm -hmm. A lot of us in life are very guarded. Um, you know, I know some people who are <laughs> extremely guarded. And I feel like in a relationship, you should be able to feel vulnerable and let your guard down completely with your partner. Mm -hmm. If you cannot let your guard down completely with your partner, that's not the person for you. And that's not marriage material for you. Because if you can't be your whole self with a person, you can't be your real authentic self with that person. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be with that person. That shows a serious level of discomfort because that says, I can't be who I am around this person. Like I have to be this way around this person because if I'm this way, they're going to react this way. And, you know, that's not something that you want in a relationship. You want to feel com not comfortable in a sense, but you want to feel secure in a relationship. You want to make sure that your feelings and emotions are validated in a relationship. But you also want to make sure that, you know, like if you if it comes a point in time where you are feeling vulnerable or you do want to be vulnerable, you know that you have someone who is very supportive of your emotional feelings, a person who loves you when you're emotionally unstable when you're mentally unstable and things like that they live the whole you mm -hmm. so it's like that's something that i feel like is marriage material too because a lot of us we enter these relationships and a person will like an idea of you mm -hmm. like an idea of you like the idea of you or this perception of you mm -hmm. of what you should be like I, i've met people who see me on social media and they're like well i want Shelly belly. I don't want this crazy person yeah, that I, I just want the met. girl I'll be seeing on the meme. Yeah, like, I want this, this, this person. And it's like, no, like, queen. I'm really like, 
I, I'm really like, you know, a, a really like funny person. Like, and it's like, they're like, wow, like you don't take nothing seriously. It's like, no, I do take things seriously, but it's just like, that's just a defense mechanism, you know, in a sense for me mm -hmm. to not get hurt in a sense. Cause the, I use my comedic humor to suppress my traumas from life, but that's a deeper topic for another day. We'll get to, we'll get to, that's another, that's another episode. But, um, and, and this, I was actually talking to one of the, the older ladies at my job. She said like the biggest thing is just like, as far as, um, Growth, what does that mean? Uh, I will have to check that, but um, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Um, one thing that I'll have to uh, end up. Uh, one thing that I was talking to her is she said compromise. You know what I mean? And that's, oh, that's, that's a big one. And it's just three like, C's: compassion, compromise, and I forgot the other one. It's another C, but currency. He's like, no, it's not. <laughs> um, there's another C, but compromise is one of the biggest things in relationships. And people think compromise is just like, all right, well, I gotta just listen to what my partner says. It doesn't what my partner says. No, it's like you guys have to come to a middle ground of like agreement in a relationship. And it's like, it's not like suppressing your needs to fulfill your partner's needs. It's really like really coming to an understanding of, all right, my partner and I both, you know, we have different strong opinions about this and we want to come to a middle ground about this. Thank you. Um, so it's like, you have to really compromise like really really compromise and sit down with your partner and be like all right how can we come to a solution with this like, yeah. and that was part of the thing that i was saying earlier it's just like really if something is like is ahead. if you might not I'm see coming. it as serious but like when you come like really understanding the other person like if i'm doing something it's just like well you know i really don't like what you when you do this or x y and z it's just like instead of saying well i'm just gonna do what i want anyway you know find like a middle ground like that's 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 one of the most important things it's just like you know compromise doesn't mean my way or the highway either it also it just means finding the middle ground we all both feel comfortable you know what i mean like so I feel like that that's really just like yeah. marriage material in a nutshell. Like really just find someone who you know you can genuinely be yourself with, who you don't want to change, who you don't have this idea of who they should be. Just let a person be themselves. Mm -hmm. If you love a person, you love them all the way around. And that's the person who you want, who you feel you want to spend the rest of your life with. Like I said, there's some people who meet people who are like, I know I want to, I knew I wanted to marry this person mm -hmm. from the moment that they spoke to me or when they looked at me or whatever, whatever. My dad told my mom he knew he wanted to marry her from the moment he looked at her legs. Like I'm like, oh, I guess. All right. Well, let me ask you this, and this is going to be my closing uh, uh, argument, and this might open up the topic for another debate. But Romeo and Juliet, true love or horny teenagers? Horny teenagers. All right, then. There. I'm not killing myself there, for nobody. There we go. Horny teenagers. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I'm going to just leave y'all with this. If you really do consider like getting married and you're in a long-term relationship, weigh out all the pros and cons. And before you get married, do couples counseling before you get married. Like You should take that the engagement stage and go to maybe like a church mm -hmm. um, if you're a religious person and speak to a pastor who has been married or speak to couples who have been married for over 30 plus years and really get insight from all different types of people who have been married for long terms of time. So you understand that when you're going through these problems, you have these, these safe places for you to go when you don't understand why your partner's reacting this way or why your relationship is going this way. And a lot of relationships crumble under financial pressure. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that there's going to be good days. Your guys are going to be up and there's going to be days when y'all are going to be down. Yeah, yeah, like shit happens. Like medical, medical shit. Like medical, one day like y'all might both have people. jobs and then one day, can you stop calling me? I don't know, goddamn degree. Calm down. Right, then, um, you have to understand that one day, like you might have to support the whole relationship. So at the end of the day, you have to understand the whole spectrum of marriage in a whole. In Before a you did dive in, you know what I mean? Yes. Understand it, what it really means. Talk to these couples. That's the way you're going to get the best insight. Talk to these couples that's been through the trials, honestly. Like, really get the insight and say, like, how did you make it to 30 years? You know what I mean? Especially when you're going through those Don't get advice from single people. Single people are miserable. <laughs> They're going to tell you single people advice. Right. They're going to tell you fuck marriage, fuck love, all that. Yeah. So take advice from people who really, really know what they're talking about. And even married people probably don't even know what they're talking about. They're just going to tell you, listen, I winged it for the majority of the time. I didn't even listen to her. She was arguing. I just would be like, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so at the end of the day, like, just really take everything with a grain of salt, but also, like, just get insight, 
and just really, if you really, really, really want to work something out with your partner, you really believe in your partner, that's something that you should look forward to and work on and put your effort and everything invest into your partner. And not like when, when we say invest, we always think, oh, in money. No, you invest into your partner so that they grow and blossom into something beautiful as well, too. So if you're going to marry someone, think about someone who you want to invest in, who you want to see grow, who you want to see blossom, who you want to see be the best person they can be, evolve into the best person they can be. And if you don't see that with someone, then you're just wasting that person's time and you're wasting your time if you're going to be in a committed relationship. That, that was a so good closing That's thing. a good, that's my closing argument for y'all today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, yin and yang here. <laughs> we ain't never doing that again, right, Yada? Well, Yada's well, we, always going to be here for are, all the debates. We are going to have, we are still looking at having guests and stuff with that. Sort of yes, debate. guests with us, <laughs> us as a team. But. But as always, thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to support the channel, please go to YouTube, subscribe. You can go to Spotify, uh, search up Yada Debate, subscribe to Spotify, uh, Hello Yada on Anchor. Again, all the links are uh, for our products that we use here on Yada Debates are in the description on and YouTube. They're and they're on my story on Facebook for 24 hours. And then Yada also posts the links and I repost them as well, too. So if you guys do need them, they are in my bio as well too and then also you can always dm us and ask yeah. us for them as well too we'll send them to you as well and follow us on social media hello yada and shelly b on uh, on instagram and all that so you can keep up with all the updates yep so guys thank you so much for tuning in to get today on this episode and then if you want to keep the conversation going you know just let us know keep it going keep it alive in the comments let us know what you think marriage material might be or who you think marriage material is and isn't like keep it real like Episode 24. Wow, 24. Jeez Louise, Yada, we're doing something right. <laughs> Telling you, Gemini.